everyone, and welcome to the 14th episode of Flowers and Friends. We are so excited to be here with you talking all about floral design on this episode. I'm Ana Galena, and I'm a floral designer, and I love sharing the joy of living with flowers. Hi, Holly. Good morning. I am so happy to be back. Hey, one more time as a guest host here today. I'm Holly Capelli. I am a mom of many who uh, <laughs> is... <laughs> it's a true story right there. Yeah, true story. I'm a mom of many taking pictures and playing house out in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> Holly, I'm so glad you're here again. And you said you're back one more time. And I'm thinking, oh, no, girlfriend, you're going to be back a lot. I have a feeling um, we've been doing having you on as a guest. And thank you for covering me again last week. Um, I am Dion Woods, owner and artist at the Turquoise Iris, also a bloom expert. Um, and I am here in central Oklahoma and I'm trying to get away from the heat that we've been experiencing, ladies. Um, but, but I'm so thrilled to be on today's show. Sadly, I missed last week's show and Leah, I'm a huge fan of Leah. So I was sitting in the airport last week watching you all and Leah's work has just opened my eyes to, it's like I, I have these like backdrops that I made a long time ago and I've pulled them out and she really got my creative juices flowing and I'm thinking, oh, I want to just grab a bunch of bouquets from Holly's garden and practice my photography skills. So thank you for last week, ladies. I hated that I couldn't be there, but I learned so much. Um, kind of difficult. Some of the, some of the tips, right? On it. Did you run into a little bit of like, eh? Oh yeah. We, we need to talk about that. We need to talk about how challenging it was, but why don't we first start with our introduction video? My favorite song. Let's go. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to, to grab our guests and, and let you all learn more about them as well. Um, I took away watching last week. Like I said, I got so inspired to get out my backdrops. And I know how hard it is to get a good photograph because you know the way social media is. If it's a little bit dark or if it's not eye catching or if it's not a scroll stopper, I love that word, a scroll stopper then nobody's going to stop. And when you're online selling, which is all I've ever done, it is really important to take your time and really practice. Anna, did you have any time at all to practice this week? <laughs> it was so hard. I mean, last week I was so inspired by Holly because she's like, ooh, I take all of my pictures. Ooh, with my old cell phone. And I'm like, I, do this. I mean, I had a really good orange flower arrangement. It was dramatic. I was like, I can play with this. None of my pictures came out right. None of them. I couldn't post any of them because they were just like so lame. <laughs> Are you sure you weren't being a, 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 just a really harsh critic, my friend? No, I mean, you... No, they were not like Holly's, but that is, that's actually something that is so good because I feel a lot of times we get discouraged because we see someone doing a great thing and then we cannot do it. And we're like, oh no, that's not for me. I'm never doing that again. And no, my friends, everything needs practice. Yes. Absolutely. Holly, how did you learn? How did you uh -huh. time? Tell us. <laughs> I'm not, no, I, I started with the little people and then when they got sick of that, I, I went on to the still life vegetable. I don't know. I mean, I just, I really just, I take a lot of pictures and then I just see one that just speaks to me, um, you know, but it takes a lot. It, 
takes practice. And speaking of taking practice, Anna challenged me last week I love <laughs> to it. create an arrangement, which I never do. I never use my flowers because they grow mostly edibles. And so I never think to put them in a beautiful arrangement and enjoy them in the way that so many people do. And she challenged me to do that. And so I went out there to the garden this morning and I gathered all my stuff and I put something together and I'm really excited to show you, Anna. Oh, I'm so excited to see what you created. So everyone stay tuned because Holly is going to show us her first flower arrangement. I don't know if it's her first, but I mean, her first arrangement creating with intention, right? Yes. My first, I would say real fresh flower arrangement, really, probably ever. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to see it. So we want to thank Leah again from the Salted Image yes. for joining us. She really got the creative juices flowing. I want to spend some time trying some new things I hadn't done before. I got out my old painted backdrops, and I'm almost positive we've got a clip from last week in case you missed it. Yay. All right. Of those one pictures you're showing were all created with an off-camera flash. So that's a light that is not connected to your camera, and it's not, you know, the ambient light, which is the natural light in your surroundings. So I have a flash and it really helps me to just get that strong directional light instead of um, if we go outside on a, a sunny day, there's just light coming from everywhere. But I really like light to just be coming from one angle and I feel like it really shows off the petals and the details. Well, flower. my flower photography <laughs> is um, completely amateur. <laughs> like Leah, I started out just taking pictures of all my babies. Um, and then they really got sick of that and they didn't want to be the focus of my, my social media stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. so I <laughs> and started taking pictures, vegetable selfies is how it started. And then, um, <laughs> and then I graduated into just, you know, really capturing the plant or the harvest or the dish, as you can see that I, that I've created. I love created. to give people like a variety of the flowers that I grow. And when, when it's daffodil season, we have all different colors in bloom. And I love to do a flat lay like that and really showcase each one, you know, like up close and personal. And um, I still just use my iPhone for all of my photos also on Instagram. Flowers are so nice to us. I mean, <laughs> they will guide you. Don't be afraid to play with them, especially if you're doing them for yourself. Just let them talk to your soul and you will never, yeah. go, you will never go wrong from. I love that I quote, like, Anna. I love that. Flowers I heard are just all really morning. nice to us. I heard that <laughs> quote all morning in my garden this morning and as I created today. And so after today, after the show, I will try to photograph it using some of Leah's tips and techniques from last week and we'll see. Well, Ooh, the mothers that I also, I also, I, I do a little photography course inside my groups because if we're selling online, it's so important to have good quality images of your furniture, your artwork, anything that you're trying to sell. So we talk a lot about the coolness and the and the warmth. I naturally gravitate towards warmth in photography. There's something about that evening light, like that dewy time in the evening that's just really warm. But when you're photographing certain images for like me, artwork, I can't alter the colors, right? Like it's very important that the colors convey through the screen as best as possible. So there are times when you're taking photographs in the evening where you actually can edit it and bring in the cool. So what I've done in my own home and every time we move, I pay attention to what angle or which light is the sun coming from the south? The West, I prefer always the South and a West window in my staging rooms. I also prefer an afternoon light between like two and four. If I do it too early in the morning, this is a North facing window and some things to take note of and, and it takes practice. If I photograph too early in the morning in the North side, I'm gonna have more of a cool temp. And then my blues or my pinks on my furniture or my artwork, they're, they're they're off a little bit. And so if that's the only time that I can to actually photograph, I have to edit and I have to use the editing tools that are on our iPhones that are, thank goodness, on our <laughs> iPhones um, because it really does change. So I spend time in my rooms. I spend, I pay attention to the day of 
the day and I pay attention to the direction of the light coming in. All of those are things that just take time and it takes a little bit of practice. Like Anna was saying, it's kind of, it's challenging. And so it's not something you're just going to pick up. You have to put in the time to really learn from that, but it is doable and it is always worth it. I think that's the most important part. I mean, it's mm -hmm. doable. And, and I'm really a believer that we humans can do anything, anything we set our minds to, but not everything has, has to come naturally. If you practice, you can accomplish everything you set your mind to. If you don't want to, you don't have to do it. I mean, it's not like you have to do everything that's available out there. But if you want to try something new, don't be afraid. Just do it but it will require a lot of practice practice and leah's on here right now i see her in the comments and she's like it's so worth it yeah if we could if we could get her just to look like leah's i'm gonna need to i need some help but we have a giveaway and i have a jar of paint and i am so ready to let other let my flowers and friends audience know about the paint and i want to ship a can of this to somebody so uh, Anna, let's hear more about um, what our giveaway is and who's going to be our winner. We are also giving away one year free subscription to Bloom TV. I mean, we have a giveaway every yeah. week. So Dion's giving out paint. We are giving you one full year of magic on your screen. So Holly, why don't we tell them who this week's winner is? Without <laughs> further ado. <laughs> <laughs> Patty Reed, congratulations. You are the winner. Awesome, Patty Reed. As usual, everybody that's popping on here, we are so thrilled you're here, but we need your help getting the word out. So if you will do us a favor and tag a friend that you know loves flowers, tag a friend that could learn more about edible flowers or doing any kind of catering or painting, tag them in the in the comments. That way they know or they get the notification even later when they're off work. And also, you commenting is also something you could do for us. Just a simple comment or a is a gift that you can give us here at Flowers and Friends and at Bloom TV. So without further ado, our guests are waiting so patiently in the background. Let's, <laughs> um, let's get started. Um, Anna, I think you wanna tell us a little bit about Miss Renee, right? Yes, I'm so happy because this is a floral design show and that's like my area of expertise. And I'm really happy that we have Renee here with us, Renee, Tucci. She is an instructor. She is an AIFD and a PFCI. We will learn all about that in a short while. But we are so exci excited because she just recently published a book. And we want to know all about your book, Renee. Hello. Hello. Yeah, there's that book right there. Don't be too proud, girl. Get it yeah, up. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I just happen to have a few copies laying around. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, everyone. So glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, that book is in our Bloom Book Club. And mm -hmm. that is, for those of you that are popping on and love a good book, you can actually get your copy in our Bloom TV Book Club. And there are others that you'll want to check out as well. We have the QR code right there. It'll take you directly there. Um, our next guest today is going to be Miss Sydney English. Uh, Hi. Sydney Dave English. How are you in your lovely kitchen today, my friend? I am great. I'm so excited to be here and um, just I've already been like taking mental notes, Dion, about like, I'm going to walk around my house later and find my son in my staging. And I just love that. That's, that's great. So thanks for having me on. And um, uh, this was wonderful. I, yeah, I, I, then, I, I'm sorry, you finish your sentence. And then I've got to ask you about this. I've got a big question I want to know. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm so sorry. I, um, I was not able to see you. So you go right ahead. So I read your intro, like your biography and all the information about you. And the fact that you are a third generation florist, as well as your husband, did I read that correct? You, you did. So, um, and ironically, that's not how we met. So, um, we, um, he was trying to date my roommate. So that's the, the funny thing. There was, you know, there was a day and age where when women needed to support themselves, if they were a divorcee or a, a widow, 
that, you know, you maybe owned a dress shop, you maybe were a nurse, you maybe were a teacher. And we both had grandmothers. Warren's was his mom's by a lot, his, his mom's mom. And my dad had a foster um, mom who they, that's how they found a way to support themselves and their families. And they, you know, they wanted to be out and about in the community and they both were avid gardeners or involved in, you know, like a local garden club and it was just a fit. So, yeah, so I have, I grew up with all kinds of crazy stories, particularly on my dad's side of, so it was my, my foster grandmother, um, my granny B, and then oh. she originally had the shop with my, my great aunt, my great aunt Bill, her Llewellyn, but she hated the name Llewellyn. So she went by Bill and the stories that they would tell were pr pretty out there, really funny. So <laughs> Well, I love that. I thought that that was such a neat little part of your story. Um, and I, I admitted that I did actually picture you guys as young teens working in the flower yeah. shop together. I, I so created I. all of this in my head. Did you too, Anna? Yeah. I love making up stories in my mind. And then when you get to know the real story, it's like, ooh, okay. <laughs> I, I love it too. My, my husband and I, we see our garden as sort of um, part of our love story. It's part of the fabric of our it. journey and everything we create in it, that space. It's really a part of our, a deep part of our relationship. So listening to your story as well, I feel like I can really resonate with, with you sharing that, uh, that gift with your husband. I, I love that. You know, Warren may say that him not working with me on a daily basis is our love story and what keeps us together. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. I love that. Now, what we found out when we pulled you guys up here this morning, we were do a little prep, we do a little pre-show, get to know each other a little bit. Renee, Sydney, you already know each other. We do. Ooh. And we met in your state, Dion. We, we met in Oklahoma. Get out. Oklahoma City. We sure did. We uh, we we went there to um, take a, a workshop together, a class. It was actually a, a commentating class to learn how to teach um, floral designers and how to commentate about floral um, design. And uh, so we were both students there. That's how we met back in 2014. Oh, yeah. I can't believe it's been since 2014. And then Renee's just it's such a gift to our industry and such a mentor. And so la last year, we were we, we just had a, a wild year with weddings and events and all that. So I reached out to Renee and I'm like, do you know anyone who freelances? And the next thing you know, she sends me this just brilliant, amazing friend of hers who now I have relocated to North Carolina. We've, we've, oh. we've, we've, we, we have adopted her. She cannot go back to Pennsylvania for, to visit, but not to live. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's still my best friend. But if she had to go anywhere, I'm glad she went with Sydney. <laughs> but you know, I think like in the spirit of your show, I mean, it shows how, uh, whether it's your avocation or your vocation and right. just putting it out there and talking with people and chatting up what you love and what you do. You just never know how you'll find those connections. And it's hard to imagine our life now without Renee's friend Darcy in our, our shop every day, you know, so. Oh, it's magical. Wonderful. I have seen that same type of transformation. Anytime I do in-person events, somebody walks away, a friend, somebody right. walks away in a connection, in a relationship working together. It happens almost every time, but it also takes a little bit of adventure, like an adventurous mm -hmm. spirit to put yourself in that area where something like that could happen to, to receive that type of connection and, um, it's amazing what flowers will do, hence why we have a talk show. Exactly. <laughs> That's why this is creating such good acceptance out there and why we love having you guys here because we're creating connections. We're creating a community. So we would like to start with Renee. Hi, Renee. We're so happy that please tell us about yourself. Tell us how you began in the flower business because we're all excited to learn. Oh, yeah, thank please. you. Thank you. Um, well, I, I I literally started in the business from the bottom up. I started um, working um, at, I was actually working at, a, if I, we go to the real route, I was at a grocery store um, in my spare time during high school, checking and bagging, and they needed help in the floral department. And I was like, sure, where, whatever, I'll do whatever. So they put me there. And that was right around the time that I had to start figuring out what I was going to do with my life, my senior year of high school. Um, and I looked around and I thought, well, you know, I like being crafty. I like getting my hands on things. Um, 
and and this ephemeral nature of flowers is pretty fascinating. So I ended up going to college for ornamental horticulture with the an emphasis in floriculture. So I have a bit of a science background behind the plants, but don't ask me about it because I haven't used it in over 20 years. So, <laughs> okay, I'll work that question out. Uh, yeah, well, let's ask Holly about gardens and, uh, you know, um, we'll just save the, you know, what you cut, what you do with the flower after you cut it off the plant, I can help you with that. Um, so uh, after I graduated college um, or during college, I was working at a local flower shop, literally sweeping floors, jumping in dumpsters. I started the week of Valentine's Day. It was like a sink or swim situation. And luckily I swam. Um, and I just worked my way up. And by the time I graduated college, I went to a, a pretty high volume shop and I started um, uh, coordinating their, their weddings and events. And that was a sort of fake it till you make it situation. And I and I just picked it up super quick and um, really loved it and honed those coordinating skills. Um, then eventually I moved to a different shop where I learned how to how to manage a team. And I was a manager for six years. And then I um, the last retail shop that I was at, I actually combined both of those jobs where I was the management manager of a large team um, at, a, at a, um, a high profile shop. And then I also coordinated all of their special events out of their store in Philadelphia and in Florida. So I was traveling back and forth quite a bit. Um, and I did that for about, so all in all, my time in retail was about 20 years. And- okay. I four years or so, I started teaching more classes and education became more and more of my my niche. And I decided to make the leap. And so I left retail and now I'm full-time freelance designer and educator. Wow. wow. So that's the nutshell. That's the whole story. Yeah. <laughs> that, all those years compacted into one, but you still haven't mentioned, my friend, how you got on a stage dancing. I oh. am. I need to know the deets on that. I didn't know you knew about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I can't seem to shake it. Everywhere I go, people are asking me about it. I did my um, research, girl. I got to know why you're on the stage dancing. So Okay, we well, part of that reason is because of Sydney. If we really, again, if we go to the root of it, in that class in 2014, um, I was not looking to... Um, Okay, I was terrified to try to get my accreditation in, with the American Institute of Floral Designers, AIFD. Okay. I didn't think I could do it. I was certain I couldn't. Well, with Sydney and several other folks on that trip convinced me. I remember we were sitting on a bus that moment wow. that they convinced me to try and go for it. So I did, I achieved the accreditation. Um, and then as education started becoming more and more a priority for me, I was honored to be invited to join the Teleflora um, education specialist team. Um, and so we travel the country and we uh, we teach floral industry folks about um, trends, techniques, um, tips, all the things wow. to keep everything up to date. So I'm getting to the dancing. So at the AIFD National Symposium, which just happened over July 4th in Las Vegas, the uh -huh. Teleflora team, which I'm a part of, did a presentation for the crowd. And my portion of the presentation was with a partner and we were interpreting the feeling of love and so we created a floral design to go with that a couture piece and oh my goodness. we actually did a little tango which is you know as you know the dance of love we did a little tango on the stage as part of our theatrical presentation Wow. It's just, I was just blown away. I just thought, wait a minute. I didn't know she is she a trained dancer. How did this no. happen? So were you absolutely petrified or were you like, you know what? Terrified, this? terrified. I mean, and luckily it was short. It was just like 20, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And we didn't practice until we were on site in Las Vegas. So for the two days before we, um, we did the dance, we just ran it and ran it and ran it and ran it and ran it. And then I, I tripped a little bit, but I didn't fall on my face, and that's all that matters. <laughs> well, our Monica says she saw you practicing in the hallway, but she didn't realize oh! that was you. Yes. So she actually saw the day the practicing. In the oh hallway. my gosh! Yeah, oh my gosh. Gosh. <laughs> I love it. Renee, tell us about your book. What is it about? Ah, is this your okay. Plan? Thank mm. you for asking. I appreciate that. Um, so here's the book, Framing Floral Techniques. And um, I, as I mentioned, um, I was a retailer with a focus building on education. And um, someone mentioned to me in 2019, um, you should write a book. And I 
it had never occurred to me to write a book. Um, and so that just planted the little seed in the back of my mind. And I just kind of like part-time nurtured it for a few months. And then March of 2020 came and my freelance and teaching calendar completely cleared and nothing to do, you know, but sit at home. Um, right. And so I revisited that seed and I thought, well, it might just be now or never. I had watched everything Netflix had to offer. So I... Um, <laughs> I called Schiffer Publishing, who um, have published quite a few uh, floral design books, so they were great to work with, and they helped me um, sort of hone in my education focus for the book, and that's what I did during lockdown. <laughs> I love that you used that time to flourish. That's oh. really beautiful in it of itself. And I'm hearing that story from so many creative people as well. Yes. Um, the little clip that you just saw, it's a reminder if you're just popping on here, you can purchase her book through our Bloom TV's book club. So we have the QR code there and you can get your copy. Um, Renee, I noticed something on your website and um, I'm going to quote you here. It says, I studied six different floral foundations over a 17 day period mm -hmm. to see how the flowers held up. Under consideration were flower longevity, foundation environmental effect and economical investment. Mm. My friends at Detail Flower Software have published the results. So are the findings in this book? Uh, the findings are not in the book. I did that um, after the book was published. But if you if you go to my website, ReneeTucci.com, you can find the link to that um, that whole study. It was fascinating. It went on for 17 days, actually studying the flowers and for 17 days. And I had to travel. I thought that the um, experiment would be over long before 17 days. I actually had to cut it short. They would have still lived on. Um, but anyway, it ended up, um, we figured out, or I, I studied what flowers held up best in water, out of water, the different floral foam foundations, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so I, I invite you to please check that out because it's really fascinating. Okay. Now they can find all of that out on your website. Yes. ReneeTucci.com. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm ready to get my hands on that. Did you know that we actually did a whole segment over sunflowers, which you have on the cover of your book? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. And I do just want to say for those um, that are wondering, Framing Floral Techniques is a um, a step-by-step how-to floral design book geared towards beginner and intermediate floral designers. So it's really okay. helping you refine your skills and sort of level up. Okay, why and I... We, why don't we get the code again on the screen? Everyone scan it right now because this is your opportunity. And I mean, you're not only learning from a pro flower designer, but she has experience in the retail side of the business. So I always think that is very interesting when you have been selling flowers for quite a while, you know what people are looking for. You know that you need to share your knowledge and arrangements that will actually sell and not just the most beautiful flower arrangements out there that only a few can purchase. So this is a book everyone should have on their flower library. So, hey, we're so happy for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, Miss Sydney, um, hey, so I cannot wait to see what you have for us today, but I'm going to leave <laughs> just a little bit of bio because you've got a lot of fun stuff going on here. So for those of you um, listening to us today, Sydney literally grew up on Main Street. So she's a third generation florist as well as her husband and she was telling us at the beginning of the show how they actually met she states she was first in her grandmother's flower shop and then in her parents flower shop she brings that love of local small town business to her florist when she's not been running a small when she's not running a small business sydney has worked extensively in the theater and arts community on the east coast as both a performer a fundraiser and an arts administrator. And that's not all guys. When she isn't working with her amazing team, I love how you did a shout out to that team. You can't do much without our team, right? 100%. Sydney spends every possible moment with her daughter, Vivian, who will be attending SCAD in the fall, her husband, Warren, and their fur baby, Juniper. You've hiked Nepal, Africa, Peru, and through the Alps and Europe and extensively in the Appalachians and Colorado. And I could go on and on and on, but I don't want to embarrass you too much. But this is, <laughs> this is 
really lovely, and I'm really grateful that you're here. I'm excited to learn more about you today, Sydney. Well, I'm so excited to be here, and I think what you, um, we, you were the three you were talking about earlier is you just you don't know what you don't know until you know like you're around flower friends. And I'll give a quick little shout out about Renee's book. I when it came out, I'm like, okay, I have to have a copy. Have to have a copy. And we've been doing. <laughs> You know, I grew up, my dad was an instructor at a community college in the evenings after he worked in his flower shop during the day. And, you know, most people who take flower classes are not doing it to go into the industry. They're doing it because they love flowers and they're wanting it to be accessible. And her book is so accessible. And even, you know, it, it may like people are like, what's framing, you know, but just just trust me. I mean, you will anyone could walk in off the street with a bundle of flowers from the grocery store and create something really phenomenal with the the guidelines that she gives you so order it today you have oh, to order thank you so <laughs> love you <laughs> Sorry. and she did not pay me to say that even though I now didn't. she no nope, and I won't <laughs> <laughs> okay so do you want me to jump in or I want you to jump in what have you got for us today because all okay. I see are these pops of color in your sink and on your counter and behind you so what are you going to show us today, Miss Sydney? Okay, so it's that time of year where even if you don't have a green thumb, I do not possess Holly's green thumb. I've killed more plants than I will confess to. Um, most of us have something in our yard we can cut, or we live in an area where we're going to ride by a farm stand on the way home. Yep. And, you know, it's the time of year for, you know, whether it's a birthday party or a graduation party, you're probably going to be doing it in your backyard by a grill, or you're just going to have folks coming over with covered dishes. And... We just want to have a few fun little, very accessible ideas, easy ideas to step it up a notch. And so what I've done today, I'm going to go through some, some quick things. But what I want to start with is that in your kitchen, you have tools and you don't have to go out and buy anything fancy to, to okay. work with what we're going to do. And I wanted to keep this delineated in that. Um, Renee will recognize these things. When we're working in the flower shop, we use things like coated wire and, you know, I've got my clippers and, and all of this. But in your house, you also probably have kitchen twine because that one year, one time a year you battle the turkey. OK, and it might look like this. Or it might look like this. And then you probably got toothpicks for the occasion that you treat yourself to olives and a martini. You know, you might have some skewers from making shish kebabs for the grill or some kind of fun craft project. And then whether you're a big baker or not or whatever, you I'm sure you have tinfoil or you have little sandwich bags or you have parchment paper. So these are all things that in the, the items we're going to show you today that um, I put together you don't need anything that is flora specific. You can okay. do all of this with items right in your kitchen drawer. So, and we're not going to open mine because they do not look neat and pretty like everything else behind right now. So let's Fair start enough. with, so, you know, there are all kinds of people come over and whether you're doing solo cups or you're doing, you know, glass glasses, it's like, where did I put my glass? Where did I put my glass? So you're right. You know, you might have a fun little wine charm or you might have a way of, you know, intermingling your guests. But we thought, how cute would it be if we did a little herb bundle name Aww. tag? OK, love, love it. Could love not be simpler. It. And listen, I love, love, love a dollar store. So these are right yeah. here, dollar store wine glasses. For my husband, who's a martini drinker, we've got a dollar store martini glass. And then, you know, if you've got folks like my mom who's like, I got to have a sweet tea, you know, then we've got a <laughs> sweet tea glass too that can work. So I'll show you what we did. Super, super simple. And it's also a way you can get the kids involved. Now, Vivian, I'm not allowed to call her a kid anymore since she's going off to college, but she made <laughs> the lane tags in the, what she did was just use something out of a slightly heavier paper out of a little sketchbook. And the mission was a little rectangle, you know, let them have a little edge, you know, fun and, or your daughter and they're a little bit, you know, on the pyros, you want to burn the edges of it. You do that too. But then she went through and just did in pretty script everyone's name. She even made one for Juniper who loves to drink out of a solo cup. And so <laughs> we, one thing we can grow at our house, we have mint that has basically overtaken the backyard right now and some different herbs. So we just picked some herbs that we thought would be fun and fragrant 
and these are all edible. So not, you know, you could literally take these home and cook up with them right after, but and did wash them earlier. And then we're going to take just a little bit of kitchen twine, tie this off. So it's basically like a little um, bouquet garni. I had a, um, we do a lot of weddings and I've had more than one couple who were either in the food industry or they are, you know, really into cooking where we've done boutonnieres with fresh herbs, but they wanted the herbs to be something that someone could actually cook with later. So we didn't use traditional florist tools. We used cooking twine. We didn't use any sprays or anything like that. So literally it could go in the soup pot after the wedding. So that's kind of the idea here. So then with your little bundle, all I did was tie this off with just the tiniest little knot left some extra string and then you just decorate your glass. And then after you do that, I put just a little hole in the upper corner of the name tag. And so then that name tag can just slide on and, you know, for a, for a dollar and some change with, you know, the twine and with herbs, and this could even be a little parting gift for your guests to take home. So they've got a fragrant little reminder and then they're ready for your next cocktail party. Um, That is so beautiful. I love that. And so easy. So easy. And so we'll go on next to, so we actually are doing a dinner party this evening where we had to come up with some different ideas and concepts for the place, um, the place cards. So here's another one, same little name tag, same kitchen twine, but this time we used okra. I was like, is that okra? You've got my favorite pickled okra over there. Oh yeah. So it's not pickled yet, but after a couple of the martinis, maybe. So (laughs) I'll show you what we did. Super, super, super easy. And again, it's one of the reasons why it's nice if you do like to work with flowers, having a florist set for when you're just doing flowers and then maybe having a dedicated kitchen set for when you are, you know, working with things that you want to be edible. You know, so what we did with this is just hollowed out a little bit of the okra and then used it as a flower vial. And if you're worried about, say you're wanting to fry these up or make some gumbo later, and you're worried about using fresh produce in it, all you have to do is take just a little piece of your aluminum foil after you've carved out just a little of this interior, tuck it down in there and then pop your blooms in. Okay. Oh my so, gosh. I would yeah, have never thought of this. Um, this is a fun little what idea. What is the aluminum for? What's that? That's just to like, if, if you're worried about like, is this flower edible? Is it not edible? And you're wanting to preserve the, the oh, okra. Okay. You could conversely use parchment paper or I love, I keep lots of these like little inexpensive sandwich bags. You know, like you would set up, put a, a PB and J in to send off to school or, or, or for yourself even. And sure. they're great for also concealing things. And I'll show you how we use that again. We tucked one down in this little peach that we hollowed out that could be sweet. Wow. So just a few things. Nothing is touching the peach. We took a little bit out. I tasted it. It was great. They're right from <laughs> South Carolina and Georgia. We added a little bit of purple basil, some local zinnias, a pretty little spray rose bloom, and all of the flowers we've affixed with toothpicks. So the stems are actually not even down in. We pop the stem off, put a little toothpick in, food grade toothpick, and just okay. use it our, like our little flower frog, our little oasis. So imagine if you were building out a charcuterie board and you wanted yes. to have some pops of flowers, but you didn't necessarily want to like have a traditional flower vase. Taking it a step further, we're actually doing this for a dinner party tonight. You take a nice tomato, hollow out just enough of the center, save it take the the core that you hollowed out to the side using a toothpick, some basil. We're going to pop that on. And now we have. I can even do this. That is so cute. And I know we're tight on time, but I've got to show you one last thing. Because because I'm thinking I could even do these things. Like, Sydney, you're giving me a lot of confidence. (laughs) And listen, you cannot visit any part of the South, whether it's virtual or not, without talking about collard greens, even if it's out of season. Okay. And so, you know, (laughs) Renee will know that, you know, like a lot of times when we're in in, in the flower shop and we want to conceal mechanics or we want to line a vase and make it interesting, there are lots of wonderful leaves that work really great from that, especially, you know, things, tropical plants. But Another thing that's fantastic is a good old collard green, and they are super, super inexpensive. I bought 
this entire bundle, this huge bundle for under $3. And they're not oh, even wow. really in season right now. So that tells you how inexpensive they are. Line your charcuterie tray with it. It's all edible. Afterwards, give them a wash, pop them in the fridge, you know, boil those puppies up with a little bit of vinegar in a few weeks and they'll be great. But what we did for I love it. Babies, <laughs> this is actually a little wine glass just lined with collard greens and they turn this beautiful kind of silvery green under the water uh -huh. and will last for days. And then this is just okay. a head of kiwi hydrangea, a couple of little blooms from one of our local farms, a little fresh rosemary. So again, you've got components here that speak to the same materials. You bring the herbs in with the cocktails, the herbs in at the place card, herbs in either in your table centerpiece or in like a, a flower slash charcuterie board. And, and it's not an expensive way to just take it up a little notch. That's so, what I was going to say. You are speaking my language. I love every totally. single thing about this. <laughs> it ah. is economical. It's edible and it's easy and uh, just beautiful. Such great. great ideas. I love it. Yeah. And you're making me look at peaches and tomatoes and okra a little bit differently. Like I would have never thought to use them as a base and that the whole just simple things like a toothpick, like mm -hmm. that has never <laughs> crossed my mind. Well, and, you know, I think it gets back to, you know, Dion, when you were saying earlier, you just sort of have to be open and listening and out there. And yes, early on when I opened my flower shop, uh, a restaurant that we loved, the, the, the chef was getting married and he and his wife came in and he wanted boutonnieres that were bouquet garni. He's like, I don't want anything that can't be cooked with throughout. And so it we was going into a time of year where we had to get a little creative because it was late summer, early fall. So we were starting to see a little downturn in, mm -hmm. you know, what was available locally in the farm stands. We didn't use any flowers except a few blooms in her bouquet and a few in some select centerpieces. We used collards and beets and, you know, tomatoes and okra. But what was important, they were donating all of the food product, all of the vegetables afterwards to a local um, soup kitchen. And it was important to them that we didn't you know, more or less contaminate them or make them, you know, inedible. And I learned so many things because, you know, I had enough lead time and we'd communicate like, okay, what if we did this? Or what if we use skewers sure. or we line things with collard greens instead of with tropical leaves? Or, you know, we use food like kitchen twine to tie things off and it was making the same kind of arrangement or the same kind of, you know, like construction, but in using food safe items, it, you know, transformed what they were able to do post um, party with it. And so when the opportunity presents itself, I love popping those things in. And the other thing that's nice is, you know, there may be some things that you don't want your kids to work with, or you don't want to have around yes. foods. So this opens up all kinds of opportunities with that. Well, that, that makes me look at collard greens differently as well, because <laughs> I'm not eating them for the first time in my entire <laughs> years. I'm not eating them, guys. I don't care what you put on them or if you put sugar. My aunt used to tell me that if you put sugar in the pot, it would take away. I can't eat them. So, but I'm looking at them differently and I'm thinking, A, I didn't know they were so cheap because mm -hmm. I have a lot of vases that are around the house that really aren't mm -hmm. that really special, right? But if I put, you're saying you line them in there. Now I'm thinking, okay, I'll buy a bundle. And then when I'm done with them, they're going out to the trash in a tight bag and they're all the things. I'm going to send you a recipe. So I did not grow up loving greens either, turnips or collards. And my you parents- You have a secret I mean, recipe? So we were in, actually when we were in Africa, and when we were hiking Kilimanjaro, we had collard greens, but they're cooked with a little bit of sugar, tomato, and peanut butter. It, it will change your life. It is one of the best recipes. I will send it to you and you have to Okay. Try. Wow. I'm a skeptic. I'm just going to tell you right too. now. I'm a vegetarian and I'm still skeptic about your collard greens, but I would. Oh, I'm going to convert you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be converted. That would, that would make uh, my aunt so happy. So listen, that ties in so much with what I was just going to say, because Renee, you were talking about the foundation and I'm learning all about that. And then with Sydney talking about all the things that we can do with our fruit and our vegetables and how we can use them in our floral design. I walked outside today because I was preparing for my segment and I wanted to put together an arrangement 
that was a little bit different. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to pull from what's in the yard, but we don't have a lot of color except in my periwinkles right now. That heat's been crazy. But we had a wild storm last night and one of the, the maple um, tree had a branch fall. And instead of me going over there, picking it up and throwing it in the trash, I have been really thinking about our guest on Flowers and Friends, Jessica Sparzak. If you guys have missed that episode, I would love for you to go back and watch that on Bloom TV. But Jessica had a way of taking the unwanted and turning it into something so glamorous and beautiful. So I walk over, I pick up the limb and I walk over to my husband and he's helping me do some clips. And he, I said, cut this. And he said, it's brown. You don't do brown. And I'm like, I've, Bloom TV is opening my eyes. Let me just tell you, I have a whole new perspective and I really underestimated the value of this. So he cut it. Let me show you what I did, ladies. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> okay, okay. Hopefully it's oh, wow. yeah. wow. been beautiful. That is so beautiful. It was just in my front yard and it, it didn't go to, oh, okay. Pretend oh. you didn't see that hydrangea falling. <laughs> You okay. need that toothpick. <laughs> Pretend you didn't see that one, but that is like neutral compared to you guys know my style. So I took the maple and I put also some Japanese maple, which is this mm -hmm. deep plum color. Uh -huh. And then our hydrangea, like four weeks ago, were bright purple pink. Uh -huh. And now they've lost their color, but they're still mm -hmm. beautiful, right? So it's yes. gorgeous. Yes. If I if I had not had my eyes open to our guests on Flowers and Friends and on Bloom TV, there's no way I would have even looked at those flowers that way. Okay. Oh. And Jessica oh. shares her journey and her story mm -hmm. on this uh, month's edition of What Women Create magazine as well. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So I just. I took it, I, you know, I thought I knew flowers. That's the thing. I thought I knew flowers. I thought I knew so much because I've always planted them and I know what's in zone seven, but my eyes have really been open to the possibilities. And when I have guests on like yourself, it's kind of like, I, I thought I knew and I really, I didn't, I have so much more to learn. And every week I come on here, I, there's no way I would have ever picked up that dead maple limb and actually tried to create something. I photographed this for 10 minutes, trying to think of my my <laughs> tips that Leah has given us last week. And I played around with that and I owe it all to Bloom because I it's really opened my eyes. I really thought I had a good grip on it. And then Holly comes on here and she's like, <laughs> I've got cans of flowers and she's putting them all in. It's just, just when I think I know something, I realize I really don't know much. And it makes me excited every week to get on here and learn more. I know, so, I know. Dion, do you have the What Women Create magazine with you? The hey. <laughs> Guys. Holly tell, me, Holly, tell me a little bit about this and why it's important to you. It's such a beautiful collaboration between Bloom TV Network and What Women Create. Each um, uh, month, we get to feature a different expert. Um, this last one was Jessica, and her beautiful story really shows you um, a different way to look at, like Dion said, maybe plants that you would otherwise see as dead, which really just have a whole new beginning of a different life to them. So it's a wonderful magazine. This morning, we got our proof for the next um, copy that's coming out that I'll get to be in. So I'm very excited about that. Um, so definitely get your copy, get your subscription if you haven't already. It's a beautiful magazine. Yay, 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 yay. So now that we have you on the screen, I want to see. But first, before you show, <laughs> why don't you tell our audience what you're doing? Because a lot of people just um, joined us and they might not know why you're bringing a flower arrangement to the screen. So I really just garden. My whole thing is edible landscaping. I try to grow things that I can eat um and so edible flowers is a big deal i cook with them but i don't do a lot of flower arranging i i see them beautiful and i i connect with them in just a different way but bloom again has opened these doors for us and our creativity to really experiment with them in these other ways and anna especially 
is so encouraging as so many of you know and she really she speaks my language she talks she talks about flowers and your connection to the soul which is then you've got my full attention <laughs> she told me go outside holly i want you to gather stuff from your garden and with intention create your first fresh arrangement so i brought everything in she told me to listen to the flowers let them be where they want to be and so that meant i had to have two arrangements because they they told me they didn't all want to be in the same one so here's my first one <laughs> All right, it's my first one. So, Cindy, be gentle. <laughs> it is all wow. Is that an artichoke? It oh is. my gosh, that's wild. The artichoke is It's all it's edible. Awesome. It's um, an artichoke flower, snapdragon, marigolds, pasta leaves. I've got rosemary. I've got some blueberries hiding in here. Um, this is flowering oregano and the celery that's gone to seed. So otherwise, maybe chicken food in my world. <laughs> and I love it. I, I used a bucket. We don't have a lot of bases. And I just made a grid with scotch tape over the bucket. So I was trying to mimic how you do it with the chicken wire, but I didn't have any ready. So I busted out my craft drawer and just did the tape and stuck everybody in. And then this little guy too. Aww, I love it. So sweet. And it's also all edible. This is like a French tarragon and bachelor buttons and everything. My um, my little uh, dahlias from seed. I don't know if you can see wimping out from the weather. Um, but I don't treat any of our stuff, so everything is edible. And normally, I was telling Anna when I bring the flowers in to cook with them, I just rinse them off. I lay them on a paper towel. And as I was putting this together this morning, I was thinking, why don't I do it this way? Why don't I? Why don't I fancy it up and stick it on the counter and we're just going to take as I need? And so I kind of think this is going to be part of my my new thing. So thank you so much for all the inspiration all of you and i really love cindy that you said that using edibles was leveling up and i was like okay, first time out the gate <laughs> i'm gonna add you to that challenge holly okay okay this is what i want you to do with one of those two flower arrangements please put one somewhere out of your kitchen a place where you spend a lot of time that is not your kitchen a place okay. you usually walk into, walk by, and every time you walk by that arrangement, take a pause, close your eyes, breathe in and breathe out, and that's it. Don't do anything with those flowers. Just let them give you a moment of connection. Oh, that is a big challenge. I think at first, I think the first day I'm going to admire them, and by tomorrow I'm going to be like, uh. <laughs> I should start drying them. I Let's see what them. happens. Let's see what happens. And you tell okay. us, please. I'll definitely try to photograph this later today using some of Leah's tips and some of Dion's great tips from today and see what I can come up with. So thank you so much again for the inspiration. I had a lot of fun going out there and trying to, trying to play florist for a minute. That's great. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. I don't know if anybody is on that can hear the audio issues, but on our end, we're hearing a little bit of audio issues. So, of course, we want to apologize that we don't have any control over it. But um, I want to make sure you guys are following us on Instagram at Flowers and Friends on Instagram. And then also, if you guys want to go subscribe, you can go to Bloom TV Network, and we have a little graphic here where you all can go. But we have over 100 experts that you can come on, and um, we have new videos being uploaded. That is where you can enter our weekly giveaway by entering your email address and your name. Because every single week we're going to give away an annual subscription to Bloom TV Network, as well as, I love giving away my favorite paint. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, we have a, 
a sound problem, but I think everyone can hear us. You know? Okay, this is part of live streaming. This is part of real life. And what do we do with real life problems? We deal with them with a smile. <laughs> We definitely deal with them with a smile. I want to thank Sydney. I had a couple of questions for you. And Renee, I had a question for you, but I, I'm not sure that the, the audio. So I think what we'll do is just thank everybody. Ladies, I am excited to follow your adventure and your future and your future with Bloom TV. Um, we just are very grateful for you spending time with us today and educating us. I am so inspired. It's mind blowing. Yes. This, is, this has been a great episode. Thank you so much for sharing with us your knowledge, your tips. I can't wait to get a copy of your book, Renee. This is going to be, I'm thrilled to see it. And please, everyone, I mean, learning with a real book is so much different than just on Instagram on, or videos. I mean, a book will always be so much better so everyone get your copy and before we leave why don't we show them our closing video hmm. absolutely let's we have built the world's first flower focused streaming network bringing the public educational and entertaining shows that highlight the magic of flowers. Learn how to heal through flowers, cook with flowers, design your living space to reflect nature, make crafts using florals, sustainably garden, and so much more. We are your network for all things floral. Join us at Bloom TV as we help bring beauty to the lives of people and the planet through nature's most beautiful creation the flower. Holly, we want to thank you all. Thank you so much. We want to thank you all for joining us every single week and being a part of our flower movement. Yes, and, and thank, Holly, you, thank you ladies so much for being with us these past three weeks. It has been an honor to have you here. You are amazing. Can't wait for you to pop in every month to share with us your tips and great ideas. Thank you so much, you guys. I had so much fun hanging out with you these last couple of Fridays. It was a blast. This is a really fun show and I can't wait to go back to the other side and be sipping my coffee on the chat. <laughs> Might be a little bit easier. Um, yeah. this, is, this is really big, Holly. We're really, really proud of you. And I cannot Aww. wait to get my hands on it. One of the, the ladies in the commentary, she asked when she would be able to see your feature in What Women Create. I believe the date is September 6th, I want to say. September-ish. You know, there's always uh -huh. okay. deadline things. But I, I believe it comes out in September. So uh, we're so excited for you. And there's going to be also a video, right? Yes, we'll have a we'll have a video like we have like Jessica's. If you haven't caught Jessica's beautiful video on Bloom TV Network um, dot com, go there and check it out. It's gorgeous. Um, I haven't seen mine yet. I'm very excited. It makes me cry. <laughs> I saw the thing this morning and I opened it up and I went. <laughs> so, oh, we can't wait. It's very to see exciting. It. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us for being here with this with us one more week we're so excited to see you next week tell them why dion because everything is better with flowers and friends yeah. Yeah. have a great